it wasn't pleasant for us. It was uh, it wasn't pleasant for our uh, for our family. Um, but there are two realities of it that, that strike me. One, and I have always believed this, is that the real victims of this and the long-term victims of it uh, are the Iranians themselves. They they can they continue to suffer from the uh, from the aftermath. Uh, the second um, is that. Uh, it still casts a shadow. Um, I would have thought originally that after a, a suitable period of time, um, tempers would have cooled on both sides and that we would have been able to talk to each other, both sides. Uh, it's finally beginning to happen. And in terms of those who held you hostage, I know that they were mainly um, young students. What can you remember about, about those people and, and how do you feel about them now? Do you feel any resentment towards them? Toward them, I do not. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, they're not my favorite people. Uh, I don't consider them among my friends. If I feel any resentment, it's to the adults in the room uh, who didn't carry out their responsibility. I mean, those in authority in, in, in Tehran were responsible for us under every uh, set of standards or criteria that you want to have. They knew that. We were guests in their country. Uh, and they were responsible for our safety. And when they needed to act, uh, they did not act, and in fact went beyond that and took advantage of, uh, of these events. So how much then do you think that that hostage crisis shapes and still shapes now the relationship between Iran and the US, and in particular the negotiations that are still going on over the nuclear program? Well, it's hard to say exactly. I mean, it isn't clearly when uh, Secretary Kerry or um, Under Secretary Sherman sit down with their Iranian counterparts. Uh, they don't throw those events at each other. Uh, they're, they're, they're never mentioned. But um, I call them the ghosts in the room. They're there. I'm pretty sure that it's made the process, uh, as we can see, uh, very difficult and very complicated. And talking of complicated, we've just seen another seven-month extension to the talks. The U.S. is pressing on, but what can be, what can really be done that hasn't already, you know, that hasn't already been achieved? What will this extension really achieve now? It's a good question. It's a good question. The reality is that compared to where we and the Iranians have been for 34 years, 35 years, in the last year, we've made a tremendous amount of, pro uh, of progress. Uh, now, it's at the level of language, it's at the level of symbolism, but that's very, that's, that's very important. Secretary Kerry and uh, Foreign Minister Zarif, they meet, and they describe their meetings as productive. Now, I ask you, Lorna, when was the last time any encounter between Iran and the United States was described as productive? Uh, I can't remember. It certainly was, you know, hasn't been at least 34, 35, uh, 35 years since that's happened. So that's progress. President Obama had made his outreach in 2009, uh, and the Iranians, uh, for reasons of their own, seemed unable to respond, uh, uh, unable to respond to it. It took another th three or four years before uh, the president's original outreach uh, began to show results. We will see whether that outreach does indeed bear results in the next few months or so. Ambassador Limbert, thank you very much indeed. You're quite welcome. To us. Thank you.